You can support this show at patreon.com slash ASA podcasting. Welcome to a Skyrimatic podcast where I will discuss my adventures and misadventures through Skyrim. Join me. Add your stories, add your tales. Let's uh, let's get into this thing. Hello, welcome back, Skyrim Podcast One Sixty Eight, I believe. Uh, so this one's gonna be a little different. Uh, we did a couple of Patreon live shows over the past month uh, during our uh, quarantine. If you're listening at some time in the future, it was back when uh, we had a pandemic going on. So uh, I took some of the Elder Scrolls related clips out of those shows and uh, patched them all together. And uh, so that'll that'll be today's show. We also have the third update from uh, from Dave for. Oops, I'm sorry. The Dark Bow Chapter 3 uh, will be coming out today. So he's uh, doing uh, her journal, and you can also read the prologue over at, let's see. He just published the prologue for the Oblivion Journal of uh, Cassandra Dark Bow over on WordPress. It's macbetas.wordpress.com. And then you can uh, go through there and you'll see Cassandra Darkbow Prologue. Um, still writing to Neil Darkbow's journal, despite having some hiccups with the main system, but the Oblivion Cassandra journals are on his laptop, so they're going well. So um, I have th- episode or uh, part three here of the Darkbow Chronicles, so it'll come up right after uh, the clips from the couple Patreon shows we did. Um, obviously during this time, if you would like to support on Patreon, that's great. If not, perfectly fine considering how the world is at, at these moments. Um, we just been trying to do some live shows there and just, uh, hop on and snooze around and talk and stuff, uh, talking all kinds of stuff, Fallout, Skyrim, Stardew Valley, which I've played like 90 hours of, uh, amongst other things. So... Uh, hopefully we get to do one this weekend as well. I'll have to see about that or some other day since schedules are all over the map these days. So, um, yes, yeah, stay tuned. We're going to ha- be talking some, there'll be just some modding talk, uh, some of what Ray was doing, some of what Victor was doing, uh, a few other little, a little bit of what Colin was doing as well, I think in ESO, um, that he was playing and, uh, yeah, there, and who else is on there? Me, maybe? <laughs> and some other people. So we have those couple of shows that we recorded, and, and these are bits and pieces from that, little bits and pieces. And then stay tuned for the uh, third installment of the Dark Bug Chronicles from Dave. So thanks for listening, and uh, here we go. I'll tell you one thing. that uh, you mentioning mods. Uh, um, the This whole thing has made mods explode on the on the nexus in particular i don't know if it's reflected on xbox or not but um i went to look at skyrim se mods yesterday and there were like 10 pages of mods over the last seven days oh wow really yeah it's like triple the number of, of mods they usually uploaded Oh, I think they're they're running a promotion right now, um, you know, encouraging people to upload mods to the service. Okay, well that makes sense then. I didn't know. That. I don't, I never go to the Nexus homepage, so um, then that makes a lot of sense. A lot of cool texture mods. A lot of really good stuff is is sort of popped up. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I think I saw it on Eleonora had Twitter, you know, had tweeted about it. Oh, okay, I missed that. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to encourage that. It's kind of breathing life back in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, some some pretty cool stuff. And people need an outlet right now. 
you know, oh, yeah. you're seeing uh, more more videos being uploaded on YouTube, more people jumping on streams and streaming, um, you know, deeper engagement in communities because some people have a little more time on their hands and they want to connect with people. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, and I'm about done with my vanilla-ish playing, so. <laughs> You've had enough. <laughs> uh, uh, had enough of Major there's, Slack. There's a lot of stuff that I really miss. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, I've been trying to. I've been actually playing with with that, inspired by by your your uh, playthroughs of his of his things. I was thinking, well, okay, what could I throw in that would still make me happy besides textures and and stuff like that, uh, but wouldn't sort of ruin the the you know uh, the aesthetic of his of his game. So you know, no no perk overhauls, obviously, but but maybe trade and barter. At least I get a little more money. You know. Um, stuff like that. I don't know. I was trying to think of ways of, of making it work, but yeah, it's kind of hard to go on a go on a straight fast of no mods. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, quite a shock. I, I haven't done it uh, except on my on the Switch, and and it was enforced, so that was actually fun. Uh, I did a, a whole playthrough uh, on the Switch when I first got it. So Ray, your recent Skyrim play has been mod free. Not not completely mod free. I still have all my visual mods, um, just no gameplay mods. No alternate start. No, no alternate start. <laughs> I I did. I actually rode in the cart <laughs> for the first for, for the first time since uh, yeah, you know, yeah I first loaded the game. Um, yeah. yeah, no. Uh, um, no alchemy changes, no cooking changes, no hunting, no, um, you know, no ordinator. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you, so, it's, yeah, but you've had a reason why why you've been playing that way. Yeah, I, well, I I forced myself to do it, uh, you know, because you know, there's so many things that I've never done in Skyrim because I've always used mods. Yeah. Um, so, you know, by running through these, uh, uh, these walkthroughs with uh, major slack, it's, um, it, it's now I can relate to some of the stuff that, you know, you guys talk about from the early days, yeah. um, yeah. you know, and, and so it's, uh, you know, it, it's been fun, but, I'm I'm over it. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking well, of coordinator, I've I've been. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm, I'm... Well, I was just going to say, and and I, even more quickly, I'm over um, playing uh, Outer Worlds on Supernova mode. <laughs> oh, for sure. Jeez. <laughs> oh, because that's the. It may be even more annoying than playing Skyrim on uh, Survival. Really? Wow. <laughs> it's just you know such contrived difficulty uh, yeah. God. way over gamified yeah i agree yeah I agree. Oh, that stinks yeah. so but outer worlds is still a lot of fun but it just doesn't need to be on supernova yeah i'm looking forward to a second playthrough of that uh, if we ever do a, a round table or something with outer worlds for sure yeah, we've been talking about it, but Colin sort of burned out on it, so he's he's mm. got to wait till he sort of gets, <laughs> yeah, rejuvenate. gets the itch again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He played it way too much. Yeah, so, yeah. I've been. I've, by the way, I've I've been using a, a, a newish perk overhaul called Adamant, uh, which I highly recommend. It's it's more uh, simplified, more on the lines of of, of, of um, Bokri or or uh, Spurg or some of the other ones. Uh, adamant how do you spell that like... a-d-a-m-a-n-t okay uh, and that mod author also has a several really good uh um he's sort of like the alternate Enai shayon uh you know with mm -hmm. a little more simplified stuff i don't know if any of it's available on xbox um but uh but, yeah oh, before i started playing this one i um i was using that and, um so you know i because I do so many characters, I have to, you know, be able to keep track of these, you know, somehow or another. So um, the character that I use this on, was his name is Adam Ant. Uh, that makes of sense. course. Uh, Does he sing and dance too? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Curls his lip. Yeah. Yeah, right. Uh, I'll be right back. I just got to go up and check the, the ham in the oven. Oh. 
Oh, it is Easter, isn't it? <laughs> it is indeed. I was just looking up this mod author. It looks like his name is Simon Magus 616 who did Adamant. Yeah. Oh, he, he did Mundus. Okay, I've seen that before, the Standing Stone thing. Oh, actually, no, maybe I just heard about it on a show because it looks like it's brand new. Oh, I Mysticism, yeah. Arena. Yeah, a bunch of overhauls. Wow, these are really neat looking. I see what Victor's saying. I'll have to take a look at some of those. Actually, yes, one of the voice actors from like Legend of Dragonborn and some other stuff uh, actually sent me an email the other day. He was unfortunately he was looking for Steve, um, but <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, and, and he he had, he had done a bunch of different mods, uh, voice acting in a bunch of different mods. I'm like, oh yeah, you should definitely uh, let me let me forward your email to him because <laughs> I don't do books. <laughs> We're not the book people, but I'll send you over to him. <laughs> We're not the book people, but we know the book people. Yeah, we'll exactly. <laughs> I actually just hopped back into, um, we have the realm, um, the, the Skyrim, the one Skyrim or the realm. One? I hopped back into the Skyrim one. I don't think the fallout one's working. I actually got to let Sherry know. Um, yeah, the fallout one, I haven't been able to get into for a while. Um, but I hopped into the, uh, Skyrim one again, cause I, I just go in there and explore and make maps and then stick them in people's houses. Basically is what I do. I think that's awesome. I mean, the mapping system of that is so cool. There. Minecraft is what it is on on the top, but there's a lot of depth in the systems. Yeah. So the, the systems are neat, and um, I uh, I wanted to explore the Skyrim mashup pack. It didn't look anywhere near as interesting as the Fallout mashup pack. As it's far not. As the it's it's really not. The mashup pack itself is very small compared mm -hmm. to the Fallout one. The Fallout mm -hmm. one you can go pretty far, and then there was of course like the Institute and all that stuff underground. Yes, that was so amazing. Yeah, when I I remember finding that and was like, "Holy crap, this is amazing down here!" But uh, yeah, the Skyrim one it came out so it was one of the early ones they did, so it was pr it's pretty basic. You get a few towns, and that's about it. I loaded in by Riverwood um, when I loaded into it, and I you know I saw Riverwood and uh, and I saw everything was a little bit brown, and uh, I just wasn't inspired to to explore. So yeah, I'm I curious. Bleak Falls Barrow there is yep, uh, that right is from there. there. Yeah, we built stairs up to it so you could get to it from the town. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's at the top of the mountain behind the town. Uh, yeah, but no, I, I will say that as a mashup pack itself, it's not great. Um, I would love if they had redone it or something, you know, and added more to it, like added Blackreach in there. That would be pretty amazing. Um, but uh, as far as the mashups go, it, it, like the Fallout one is far superior to it. That I was... can imagine if they made the lava glowing blue and oh, that would be so neat. Yeah, yeah, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, I was hoping to find like I went digging to see if I could find Black Reach. It's not there. And then I looked it up and it was like, no, it doesn't exist. <laughs> it's like, no, it's not there. Sorry. An opportunity lost. Yeah, yeah. No, it would be that would be really, really fun. Um but yeah, if, if you're gonna do one of those packs and you like enjoy both of the games, definitely do the Fallout one. That one's super fun. Because it, yeah, it Fre Freighter's in the uh, chat, oh. and he said he thinks that uh, that she took down the uh, the Fallout one to make the Skyrim. No, no, I do the Skyrim one. I oh, I, do you? Yeah, oh, okay. I took care of that since Sherry was doing the Fallout one. Uh, but every okay. once in a while, if you don't load it up yourself, like the thing messes up. Uh, it, it's some weird issue with it. Um, I think it needs to like update or something is all it is. Yeah. So yeah, I've been doing the, uh, I set up the, uh, was it Skyrim one when we did it that way, uh, you know, she was only paying for, didn't pay, have to pay for another one. Cause I think you have to pay for each and every, um, realm basically. Yeah, okay. But, Neat. So for people who want to watch the Patreon show live, because uh, I haven't joined in on a Patreon show before, I went to our page and I see Lee in there commenting. Uh, is it streaming to YouTube, you've said? Or is yeah, it I use, I, basically I use YouTube and just unlist it and put it on, uh, put the link in pa the Patreon page. Oddly, it reminds me of, a, a, was that Skyrim mod? Um, Forgotten City? Oh, yes. Where you can play, you know, depending on how you talk to people, changes how it plays out. 
and it could end in like i've had it end in like five minutes or you know you can play through the entire a, a longer series of uh quests and things to do but if you uh tick off the right people it can end pretty quickly <laughs> i only had that installed once on on pc I, i've never played it all the way through it's it's pretty good uh and it's it's good for like multiple playthroughs because the different thing if you do different things it's vastly different outcomes which, which i appreciate it it's like there's like actual consequences like they'll basically kick you out of the city if you do something wrong i, I mean it's been quite a while since i played it it was when it first right. came out but well it's not like they have the same penalty that the game developers have so you know, when you're making a game, you want people to be able to get through the game and finish it, you know, find some path to get there. But for a mod, you can say, no, you're out, you're done. Go enjoy the rest of the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. Kinda you're done. Me. Yeah. And then I don't think you can even go back in, if I'm not mistaken. It's not like you can go replay it or anything um, because mm -hmm. the story completes, basically. So have you guys ever run with uh, that one mod I've mentioned in the group before, Forgotten Dungeons? Uh, I don't know if I've done Forgotten Dungeons or not. <laughs> It, uh, I mean, it's not one of the, it, all it adds are dungeons. Yeah. And it adds too many of them. Uh, but they are huge and they are really well designed. Huh. Um, and Radiant Quest can go there. That's why I was thinking about it. Because it's kind of fun. You, you get a, um, you get a Radiant Quest sending you to this, you know, forgotten whatever dungeon. And it turns out it's a two hour dungeon. Oh my so God. it makes them a lot more epic than they usually are. <laughs> that's insane. Yeah, that's crazy amount of time. Some of them are only 20, 30 minutes. They're various sizes, but there are a couple that are just huge. Huh, Forgotten Dungeons. I have to check that out. I wonder if that's available on on Xbox. Yep, check. yep, it is. Ah. Well, I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, that might be something we could add to the modding roundtable at some point, which we have to still set up. <laughs> 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 it's just time, though. Oh, God, it feels like... It's I know. It's so weird how time works these days because <laughs> when i looked at the last episode and i saw it was a couple weeks ago i was like man i felt like we just recorded the other day how'd that happen yeah no it did yeah no i saw the pop-up and and i mean i wasn't even there and i felt the same i'm like didn't they just do this yeah <laughs> so i don't know it was weird but uh regardless i'll have to get together see what's on the xbox ones i forgotten dungeon sounds interesting though Right now on yeah, my... a lot of good mods needed over. Yeah. On my one character, I'm still in... Uh... Where did I... Oh, I was in the Soul Cairn. I just got out of it, I think. Um, I did the entire... What, what, how do you say the guy's name? St. Geobs or whatever. The book where you have to get all the volumes of the book in the Soul Cairn. Yep. Or, or all the chapter. I did that, went and got all those. I did the uh, RVAC, of course, and cleared everything I could in there. And uh, I think I just exited the Soul Cairn, if I'm not mistaken, and headed back to the house. So uh, once I'm done with the uh, Dawn Guard storyline, I'm playing the vampire yep. side of it. Once I'm done with that, I'm, I'm getting cured of vampirism because I'm over vampirism. Um, you are playing the vampire side. Oh, neat. Yeah, well, because I had uh, Max, because I'm doing, every, I want to get every achievement with this one character because I never did the achievements on Xbox One when SE came out. Right, yep. So I played it vanilla and just been, and I did the, um, what, what should we call it? Uh, Werewolf previously. Uh, you know, when I was in Companions. So I needed to do Vampire anyway. So I was like, well, I might as well play as a vampire if I'm going to do that. So uh, I let Harkin vampirize me <laughs> and then uh, maxed it out. And... Never gone down that road. It didn't look too attractive to me. You know what I mean? It's I feel like vampirism has pretty much only negatives. Yeah, I mean, it feels that way. it's not super fun to play as a vampire. I found it more fun to play... Ugh. Although I will, I do have to say, as you got more and more powerful, uh, there was some pretty powerful aspects of the vampire lord type character, where you could uh, there was a spell that was basically like telekinesis for people. I forget what it was called, but um, yeah, I could grab like a mammoth and throw it in the air, or grab, you know, if I grabbed like a. Uh, soldier or whatever you know or, or a guard or whatever I, I could, could you 
could you grab a giant yes. and, and show them what it's like to be tossed high in the air? I did, yeah. You don't they don't go as high as the guards and things, but mm-hmm. you can you can get them moving. <laughs> oh, I like that idea. Just turn about being fair play and all. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't they don't fly like, you know, when they send you into the sky and you're basically up even with uh, you know, the graybeards or something, but uh, it it is a it's a it was pretty fun like for a little bit but it, I found the vampire lord got more tedious than the the werewolf where you're just basically running yeah. around meleeing and eating people. I feel like the vampire side is uh, even though it's part of it is a little bit more of the afterthought whereas the companions are you know a full faction yeah yeah as much as factions are there in Skyrim yeah exactly and I don't know it's there's so many inner politics in the vampire side of the Dawnguard story. Everybody's like trying to stab everybody in the back, basically in that castle. <laughs> so, it's a little yeah, weird. they are brutal. Yeah, yeah. Nobody likes anybody else. <laughs> Sounds very depressing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, if you go in there, no, nobody likes anybody else in in the uh, in Harkon's castle. It's they're all real shifty and not real. They're all trying to gain his favor in some way <laughs> by mm-hmm. undercutting the person in the next room. <laughs> It's funny, though, that whole DLC, to be fair, because the Dawn Guard are a pretty surly bunch themselves. Yeah, it's not like they're the friendliest gang in the world either, you know. <laughs> you know. But they are definitely on the better side of it, we'll say that. <laughs> yep, yep. But uh, one of my favorite characters I did, I'm going to uh, free him when I get out, is Dernavir. I'm going to let him fly around Skyrim a little bit when I get out, shout and let him come out. I feel like he's one of the unsung heroes of the game. <laughs> <laughs> heroes well yeah i mean he's a dragon but you know poor guy's been stuck in soul cairn forever you know no that's very cool i agree he's kind of like uh i don't know he's like an undercover parthenax basically I mean, he tries to kill you but he is very nice to you after you beat him <laughs> <laughs> yeah once you gain his respect yeah yeah i mean he sits outside he waits for you he's like oh you tried to kill me, but I can't die. I'm stuck here in the Soul Cairn anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> please let me fly around Skyrim sometime. <laughs> I remember liking him, but it's been too long since I've done that part of the quest line. Uh, my last two playthroughs, both on SE and PC, I never did um, the full Dawn Guard content there. Yeah, uh, well, I, the, the Cairn can get a bit tedious at times. You know, depending on how you're doing it. If you're just going in and playing the quest, it's not bad. But if you want to grab all the stuff and all that, it, it can be a little a little much. Yeah, I definitely did the St. Jeb's thing and stuff like that on my one real playthrough in there. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's something you only really need to do once. I mean, mm-hmm. you're not really gaining anything. Doing it multiple times. You know, it's not like some amazing quest line or anything. But it, it's a fun thing to do one time reason to explore yeah yeah it helps you get around it, it's hard to find your way around that like if you don't i mean they're really hard to find if you don't know where they are <laughs> all of them because there's some that are just in weird places next to like chests or just up on a pedestal or or something like that so if you don't kind of know where they are anyway it's you really got to scour the entire cairn for it and you got uh serana with you the whole time so there's that also <laughs> it's funny some of our listeners talk about a uh, cross-pollination of shows and how they listen to this and i mean we're constantly affecting each other in the facebook group too with the whole oh i need to play this game oh, i want to play this game but yeah talking about skyrim here really wetting the whistle for sure let's <laughs> see that's it <laughs> and minecraft and everything else we yeah brought up. that's the thing yeah <laughs> yeah well it was funny when the, when the fallout 3 round table started i'm like oh my god i gotta go back to fallout 3 i love fallout 3 so so much i'm like oh but when am I going to have time to do that? <laughs> it was glorious for me for the first month. Um, as, as Ray can attest, and uh, Andrew has also said, the last month or two, it was playing, it was more like, I'll go in, I'll play for three to five hours, get stuff done I need to get done, but then it's back to 76 if I can. Yeah. Um, but the first month, it was very much like that. Like, oh, I'm so happy to be back. Oh, I'm enjoying every aspect of this and really living in that world again. <laughs> yeah, I really loved, I don't know why, three, I just really... I like 3 better than New Vegas. I don't know why. I don't, maybe it's more Oblivion-esque. That might be why. Yeah, maybe. Uh, you know, because I, I enjoyed that game so much. Um, 
three is more open. You know what yeah. I mean? It is more pick a direction and go. Mm -hmm. And the DLC is is uh, is decent that way. I I I'm on New Vegas slightly better, but talking about ranking them in the past, I've always said Fallout Three is my least favorite of the four modern Fallouts. It's also still a nine out of ten for me, no problem. Yeah, yeah. It's not like it's mm -hmm. like four is probably my least favorite, but I still loved it when I played it. You know, like I put a ton of hours into it relative to you know normal people <laughs> <laughs> normal people yeah i'm not gonna like compare it to the hours i've put into other not games, you dear but... patrons <laughs> yeah yeah to like yeah what normal people put into a game i mean i i did a ton of different playthroughs on that you know when it came out so i've i've certainly enjoyed enjoyed that very very much i think it's pretty rare to find a, like a game just has to hit you right to constantly go back to it you know like even Oblivion, I'll go back to, and, or like yeah, you know, like I said, Minecraft or whatever. But like, it's rare for a, for a game to hit you that way, where you where you go back to it, and to have a few of them is is pretty nice. It is very nice. It's also cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> there is that. It's a less expensive gaming habit as well. Assuming you can still install or run the old version, you don't have to buy like <laughs> yeah. another copy. Oh my god! When I tried, when I first tried to play Morrowind when it was first backwards compatible on uh, 360. Yep. Oof, that was not easy. <laughs> no, it's so nice on Xbox One. The uh, the, the back compat version is, is it? so well. I'm going to have to try yeah. it on that because I haven't tried it recently. I haven't, honestly, I haven't tried it since, yeah, that uh, when it was very first uh, backwards compatible on 360. So, Do you have a One X? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I have to fire it up on there. I have the disc, so if I put in the disc, it should just upgrade it, right? You should be eligible to get in and get the digital one installed. Yeah, yeah. you want to play the digital back compat. I mean, that's how back compat works for the older games, is it does download a digital copy. It just downloads a digital, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, but no, it looks so good. I mean, draw distance is still a thing, mm -hmm. um, but it's so much better than it was, and um, it's so smooth. And you probably saw, I mean, when it came out the first month, I was posting pictures and stuff in the group. Yeah, and yeah. I, really enjoyed it. I still didn't finish it. I have never 100%ed Morrowind, sadly, even though I've played it a bunch. Like, I've had many playthroughs. But you get to a point where, and spoilers for a 15-year-old game or 18-year-old game, um, you know, you, uh, you, you meet Vivek, you get into the underground, you've gone through the ghost fence, and you've explored all around there, and you know what's going to happen. You know, you, you've just got two or three more dungeons, you've got people to kill, and then the game's over, and you just don't want to go through the motions, you know, because it's yeah. just a whole lot of back and forth. So I, I always stopped by that point, but uh, but it was wonderful to go back to it. Yeah, I have to try it on Xbox One then, because um, I have that's something I haven't done yet. I mean, it's still the graphics are still older, but but it, it's decent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you get the graphics. There. I wonder where because I think Oblivion is on Game Pass, if I'm not mistaken, for Xbox One, or it was for quite a while. Yeah, um, most of the Bethesda games have been on there for at least a bit. I mean, because, yeah. you know, they've got a pretty good relationship, so. They've popped in and out, I know that. But, I mean, I've played uh, on, I've actually played that on Xbox One, and it was pretty smooth. Oh, the Oblivion 1X version was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, thought it, I, I thought it played pretty well, and used to get a little stuttering on 360, where, like, the frame rate was slower. Mm -hmm. And But on, uh, yeah, the 1X, it was it was really, really nice. I feel like the controls are still modern enough on that where I go can go back and be comfortable. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not bad. And also the the color, like they upgraded yeah. the the color depths and stuff. So it's funny. It's almost basically they just loaded the textures that were already there for the PC version that we couldn't ever see on console. That you couldn't see. Yeah. <laughs> that you mm -hmm. couldn't see anyway. <laughs> yeah, that big old 320p on on the original Oof, version. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I put so many hours into that game when it came out. Oh my god. And that was something I kind of just found in the store and was like, ah, let me try this and stumbled upon it. You know, I didn't really know anything prior to that. So currently for Bethesda Game Studios on Game Pass, um, this is not Bethesda Publisher, but Game mm -hmm. Studios in particular, it's Fallout 4, Fallout New Vegas, and that is it. Fallout 4, Fallout New Vegas, uh, but they do have ESO and lots of other uh, Bethesda yeah. games too. Mm -hmm. That makes sense, yeah. I think Oblivion may have went off last month or two months ago, something like that. It, it's been on and off of there, but <clears throat> but it was definitely on there at one point. Uh, yeah, I, I really, really, really wanted to play Oblivion, but 
I just could not do it. <laughs> just too old. It was, yeah, just, you know, the the fighting was just so janky to me. I just couldn't get it to, you know, to where I could do anything effectively. Yeah. There, there's no vats to make it better. I mean, once you learn some magic, and, and uh, as long as you're not trying to do archery. I do. I, I actually play archery on there. As an archer on there, <laughs> it is not easy. <laughs> no, no, it was bad. It, yeah, uh, the, the... I mean, I just, I, you know, by the time I got out of the sewer, it was like, okay, I'm done. It does. I mean, once you get used to it and get, like I said, some magic and and some decent items, you just kind of wave your sword at them and they die eventually. And <laughs> and we get past that. The story and the you know the stealth and stuff, all of that's super improved from from Morrowind and and pretty good. Man, that chameleon armor is like phew, more powerful than invisibility. <laughs> it's amazing. If you get a good chameleon armor, oh mm -hmm. man, it's like yeah, and you can enchant stuff yourself. I mean, the enchanting yeah. of Living was was the best that way. Yeah, you couldn't craft spells anymore like in Morrowind, but you could enchant well. Yeah, Freighter in chat mentions Oblivion is so good on Xbound. It it, it totally yeah, agree. I agree. Yeah, that's where when we did the round table. Uh, like a year or so ago, that's what I played it on. So it was like super good. Yeah, and that was a fun roundtable, by the way. I was really glad you guys got in there. I'm glad you did all the Shiagora stuff. And... Yeah, oh, it had been so long since I had done that. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, this is so nice to go back to. I forgot how deep it was and how different that that whole world was, the Shivering Isles was, you know? It they was... really, it's, I heard an interview with um with Wes the other day who does the voice of Shiagora. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about how I'm um, bringing character. Oh, the, the Dark Brotherhood guy there, the one you meet, Lucius Lachance. Yes, yeah, yeah. So he was talking about how he had to, when he had those lines, he didn't want to read it like everything was uh, race based before. So all the actors, you know, they recorded the line for the race. There were the six actors, the six races. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, a yeah. little more than that, but not much. And so you didn't know if you were doing the line for a generic NPC walking around town or real NPC. Well, the person that was doing the voice for, I think it was the Imperial race or what have you, um, was originally doing Lucian, Le Lucian or Lucius? Lucius, I think. Uh, Lucius? I thought it was Lucian. Is it Lucian? Maybe it's Lucian. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So he had done those lines, and then they wanted to try something different. So they had Wes do them, and um, and he tried to imbue a little bit of uh, a, a little bit of a different style there. And they liked it so much that when they went and you know people identified with the character and enjoyed it, when they were creating the Shivering Isles, they said okay. And so they actually did. That was the first time that they added a whole lot of individual NPCs with not just uh, personalities and, and different dialogue, but the voice actors also reflected that. Yeah, the, there's a lot of – I can see that because there's – the townspeople are – actually, there's quite a few of them for a mm -hmm. DLC. Um, I forget what the towns are called. I don't know why. Uh, there's mania. There's I forget what the towns are called. But yeah, when you go through there, yeah, there's a there's so many different different people in the different areas you come across. Yep, it, and that's where it came from was uh, people's enjoyment of the Dark Brotherhood quest line. They wanted to um, to kind of expand on that. And then of course we get to Skyrim, and so many more voice actors and oh, yeah. a lot of individual characters and stuff. So I, I feel like that was that was definitely a turning point for them. Yeah, you can definitely see it's definitely. Uh, like Shivering Isles feels like an upgrade from Oblivion when you get it, oddly in an odd way, you know. It's like uh, I don't know. It's like an upgraded version of the game, basically, with with mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. How that's done, and even the story itself is uh, is pretty interesting. And the enemies you come across are just so interestingly designed and so different and. And like, unlike anything else in in the rest of the game, I remember when I first played it, I actually had the horse armor too. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> oddly enough, I did have the horse armor originally when I got it. <laughs> I mean, it's only four ninety nine. It's a steal. Yeah, yeah. I, I at the time I bought it. Yeah, I remember buying it and having the horse armor. <laughs> I didn't know like, and back then I didn't know it was a thing that was a joke. You know, that became a running joke, of course, but. Uh, to me, I was like, oh, okay, cool. I got some more stuff. <laughs> yeah, just just like now with the, the haters on 76, a lot of us didn't complain so much about the cost of DLC. I mean, yeah, it was a little much, but, you know, no big deal. Yeah. It's a new thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't have to buy it. I was like, cool, I'll buy it. I played, like, 
I don't know, 700 hours of this game. If I give them another five bucks, I don't think it's that big a deal. <laughs> or I didn't see it as a big a deal, that big a deal anyway. I don't even remember how you got it. I guess you did have a... That was on the original Xbox, right? So I guess there yep. was some kind of... It was of... a microtransaction. You had to buy it like a DLC. Yeah. So you go to the store and you purchase it as an add-on. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's right. That's crazy. And they didn't know how to price that stuff back then, you know, because it's not like there was an an item shop. Yeah, so no, there was no. Yeah. Like buying an expansion, but this time it was horse armor. <laughs> and so, <laughs> yeah, I actually heard. Um, I think it was Todd, uh, it, or it might have been Emil. They were talking about uh, the pricing on the game and how they actually had suggested of putting it in at like a dollar ninety nine, and and. <laughs> They actually uh, mentioned that Microsoft were the ones that had a slightly different pricing structure and that it had to be a certain minimum. So. Oh, that doesn't make, yeah, that makes sense. Because <laughs> didn't they have the, uh, I think they still do, right? You have to use like the Microsoft points or something or. Uh, or... I, I mean, at the time it was Microsoft points. Now, That's what now it was. it's just money. Now it's just money, right? Yeah. At the time you had to buy like, yeah. So that makes sense that it would have to be $5 because you probably had to buy a certain amount of points. to. Yep. Or, or $4 for 500 points. Yeah. Whatever it was. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. that's probably what it was. It was probably just over the threshold to have to make you buy the second level and then <laughs> have those wasted points that they, you then eat, would eat <laughs> purposely. <laughs> oh, man. Memory lane of games. <laughs> uh, well, thanks for hopping in, everybody. Victor, wherever you are. <laughs> eating ham. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Victor eating his ham. <laughs> uh yeah, I've been trying to do some more Patreon shows since uh, there's a lot of downtime these days. <laughs> Figure it's a nice I love thing, it. thing to hop in on a Sunday or midweek or whatever. If we, uh, Michelle hopped on it was last, uh, was it two weeks ago we did it? I think now. Sounds about right. Yeah, about two weeks ago. So, yeah, if anybody else wants to hop in um, and, and Patreon, just shoot an email. To one of the shows let us know you mm -hmm. can definitely hop on as well and yeah i was super happy to get the invite today it was fun whether we have a topic or uh, just kind of a wandering wherever yeah, we went like today that's what i figured okay. you know if people wanted something to check out you know during uh the boring times here yeah whenever i post then it like uh i'm i'm not as organized as andrew so like uh whenever i post it there's a hangout absolutely everybody is welcome to it <laughs> <laughs> that is my general open call. Uh, I know Andrew's much more stringent with his scheduling and much more uh, organized, but <laughs> well, you know, so we we had a four hour show last night. <laughs> oh my god, you had a what? <laughs> four hours. Show. Holy yeah. crap! It was like four hours and eight minutes for my hour recording show. Yeah. It was like Killigan's Island. After the three-hour tour, we're like, oh, God, where are we? We're lost. <laughs> oh, my God. Four hours. It, it was funny. It's, I, I, it's, you know, especially with him working uh, nights and sleeping days. He's yeah. pretty energetic at night. Oh, man. Uh, obviously, I love to talk, duh. Um, Ray's like, I got nowhere to be. <laughs> so, you know, if we got the guests and, and, and their game, we just keep going. <laughs> yeah. Is. Oh, that's There's funny. always something to talk about. That's amazing. Oh, that's amazing! But four hours uh, might be a, might be a record. I I really try to keep it under three myself. I I aim for two to two and a half. Um, yeah. When we're kind of writing up the notes and stuff, but it's so easy to digress. Oh, you know. for sure. Some of the original Skyrim roundtables were like three hours. I think they may have been longer than that before they were edited, but they were at least they were close to three hours when we posted them. I know that. Mm hmm. So that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. It, when you're in the thick of it and it's still new, like 76 has been to us and stuff. I mean, we love the games, right? We all do. Yeah. So just want to talk about it. That's it. That's, oh, God, maybe one day get a new Elder Scrolls game. <gasps> <laughs> one of these days. Oh, I almost dropped my mic. Oh, gosh. Well, I'm go I have to edit another podcast. <laughs> Oh, as goodness. a matter of fact, from the other night that I didn't do two days ago when I was supposed to, and now all of a sudden it's Sunday. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I might do it at work tomorrow because it's supposed to rain all day, so hole up in my office and do it. But uh, <laughs> uh, probably do another uh, Patreon one, maybe next week, 
maybe midweek. I don't know. Whenever everybody, whenever anybody wants to. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. Let us know. Um, I, I probably won't join for most, but I'd love to come on again. It was wonderful. Yeah, for sure. Everybody's always invited. Um, that's all I have. Anybody else have anything? Colin, did you try um, Outer Wilds? Um, no, I, I had a look at it. Um, as you said, it was um, available on Epic, um, which I have but don't like. So I, I checked it out. It's also available on Xbox One, and you can get on that as well. But um, as I said, I had bought the what you call it the new elsewhere. Well, not the new, the the previous um, chapter to ESO elsewhere. Um, the ones with the where you go to the land of the Khajiit, and it's where the dragons are attacking. But I just I just can't get into playing it. So. Hmm. Uh, I played it for a few hours, probably about uh, six, first six or seven quests, I think. Uh, and then I sort of like topped into a bit of PvP. Um, and that was uh, Person versus Punk. Um, <laughs> that was fun for a few hours, and, and then it just annoyed me because um, what they've done to. because. Tr- because there's lots of um, people get really annoyed because there's some people who sort of like, you know, because you have three factions in PvP, you have to boil it down instead of like getting into like races and stuff. It's just you got yellow, red, and blue. And um, people used to get on their blue character and then play for a while and then they jump on their red character and then join up with their friends who are also playing on blue ca- who are still playing the blue characters and then go into like red camps and cheat and steal scrolls and things like that just to mess up red and they thought that that sort of stuff was fun uh. so to try and solve it they made uh, the faction that you choose You'd choose your faction, and that would be locked to your account. I think it's for a month or something like that. So you can't during that month, during the compa- the, the campaign, for that you can't go from one character to another character. You can only play as one color. Um, but then everybody just like you know all the the big guilds all just went with blue. So every at nearly all the time on their server, they have like twice the amount of people on at all times than all the other two factions. Um, and that's, uh, I'm usually on the red faction, which is Ebonheart Pact. Uh, and and then the guys who are the, the yellows, well, they're all just douchebags. So. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody really cares about them because they're all scum. Uh, <laughs> but, it, it, you know, it just irritates. And they, they brought out this huge patch, I think, just after the Elsewhere thing that they brought out, and it was to, you know, it wasn't a patch that was bring like the the big update. And usually at this time they're bringing an update, like you know, a little a new dungeons, and you're like, no, they spent this entire update to make, to make bug fixes and to sort of like make it more streamlined and sort of like uh, make it so there's less crashes and everything runs smoother and there's no bugs and uh, it's still exactly the fucking same. You know, you get more than, you know, 20 people outside a keep. If you die and try and spawn at a camp or a keep, that's it. You the, It crashes down to desktop and you've got to go all the way back out to the home screen. You've right. got to load another, you got to load another game and then load, uh, then cancel that game and then load ESO back up again oh to God. clear it all back up so you can get back into the game. And that'll probably happen about, I don't know, in a, four or five hour game session and that'll probably have about six or seven times that's that's really annoying yeah so it's probably better for people because i'm on the um north american server and because i'm all the way over here it's probably a little worse for me so uh, how far i am away from it but it's everybody complains about it in the chat oh and then you got to put up with chat to find out what's going on in, in the fight uh, hmm. And then you have to put up all, all the idiots putting racist comments in there, putting misogynistic comments in there. 
Um, or if you sort of like get into a group and you go onto a voice channel and then you'll get people making um, sort of like, you know, prejudice comments or racist comments in the chat. And then you got to leave that group because there's half of them are laughing at what this scumbag, this filth has said over the waves. So then you got to ban that guy and then ban the guy who's leading the group because, you know, he was the guy who laughed at it and then kicked the guy out for making that comment. So. So it's basically become the internet. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you know, every, like you know, with everything, there's, you can't get rid of all of the people who like ruin it for everybody else. Um, but it just feels like Bethesda should do a little bit more, or Zenimax. I'm uh, sorry, should do a little bit more to. Uh, there should be lifetime bans on uh, any time, uh, any type of that impropriety is um, documented and sent into them. And there is, it doesn't seem that anybody has any fear of making those comments in live chat, live on the screen, so everybody on the entire uh, server can actually see them. It's and Elder, person, Elder Scams Online. Yeah, that's it. That's what it should be called. But uh, the, was it the, the chapter, the elsewhere chapter, just wasn't holding my interest the way. You know a bit of PvP can because it's a little bit more exciting. You still thinking uh, of getting the Skyrim? Well, I don't want to get the Skyrim one. I'll play play through the the Elseworld one. Uh, uh, maybe I'm just in the funk at the moment because I haven't played um, any Skyrim or anything else. I did see that um, uh, Gopher has started doing uh, a revamp of his um, was it uh, Fallout New Vegas um, mod installation. Oh. videos and he's redoing those on uh, for the vortex so he can install all the, all the mods and stuff like that and get all the big uh, uh, quest mods and everything like that for fallout new vegas and he's redoing his whole show so he can download the um the mvse and uh hmm. was it, uh, the four gig uh well, not the four the four gigabyte ram patch or something like that so it runs off of Four RAM instead of two RAM and all that sort of stuff. <coughs> um, so I was thinking about maybe following that and then redoing uh, Fallout New Vegas on uh, uh, which we call it on Vortex and then playing through that. Very cool. But mostly I've been playing uh, Magic uh, Arena, um, uh, sorry, Magic the Gathering Arena, the, the computer game one, and um, that's a lot of fun as well. But then you get like you know again you get douchebags and that, um, some who are just have it like uh, on a computer loop, so it just keeps on playing games. But there's nobody there, just so they can sort of like you know go up the ladder and sort of like win or lose, win or lose. But people will just if there's there and it's just waiting, ticking clock. People will like because there's no, um, it's just on the free play one. So if you just uh, quit or sort of like concede uh, there's no ramifications so they just play through that so they can see if they can get um, uh, more wins or less wins just so they can ladder up without actually being there. That's an absolute pain. Yeah. But, uh, but the one that annoys me is when I lose. So <laughs> I do a lot of that so they, they've got to fix that in the in the, in the the next patch. Uh, need to get rid of Losing. So Ray, what what have you been doing in Skyrim? I've gone back to Skyrim stuff. <laughs> um, still playing the uh, Argonian character. Oh, oh, um, still still with Major Slack. Yeah, yeah, cool. But it, you know, it's kind of fun to find the you know silly things that you know I just never have paid attention to before. <clears throat> like, you know, I'd been in Glover Mallory's basement in Solstheim. Um, plenty of times gotten the gear out of there and everything but never paid attention to the fact that there's a letter in there and you pick up this letter and read it and it's um, he is sapphire's dad and so you take this letter back to sapphire give it to her and she gives you you know she gets all sappy and everything and then she gives you an exquisite sapphire you know worth five thousand gold wow and uh it just never, you know, dawned on me to ever pay any attention. It's just a stupid no. letter, you know, laying next to a strong box full of gems. 
that's awesome so, so there actually is a, a sort of a tie a tie up of sapphire story i, I never even knew yeah that's, that's really cool i think i did that super early on and that was probably the last time i did it yeah, yeah. i mean you know it, it it's you know good for some gold but yeah it's not anything that you really that's really tied to anything no it's almost like a little easter egg yeah michelle in all your hours have you have you come across that yeah oh of course i should have known <laughs> <laughs> no that's awesome I'm I, wow yeah, yeah i i said I, I play slowly and i uh always uh, give a lot of attention to the details yeah 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 yeah, and you know, I'd never paid attention to the fact that you know, like in White Run, if you chop wood and sell it to uh, Hulda, the room becomes free. Yeah, I think that's and true with every inn, isn't it? You can you, once you yeah, become friends, pretty and, much. Yeah, yeah, once you become friends, and then also, you know, you can loot everything and and all that kind of stuff. Um, also, I've never had a character that I was a hundred in um, smithing and enchanting. Um, so this is the first time I've done that. So I, I was able to do, you know, double enchants, never really care about enchants. I've always been able to find, you know, enchanted items that, you know, do, you know, perfectly good for me. Yep. And so never really paid much attention to that uh, mechanic. So that's been fun. Yeah, it really is a good, a good sort of lesson in the, in the deep dive into the mechanics of Skyrim. Um, yeah. And the, the, uh, once you become friends with an inn, you also get the well rested bonus from a from the bed in an inn. Right. So yeah. So it's worth doing. It's not it's not just um at least if you play in his his style anyway. It's all yeah. About. And when you use I need and you're out of gold, uh, having a lot of innkeepers friends is is very useful. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Have you so have you guys well, Ray, you're not playing with any mods because you're doing major slack. But uh, Michelle, have you got any any new mods to, that are interesting? I, I again, I've been I haven't really played seriously in almost a month now. Uh, no, I've gone back to my uh, my hunter gatherer, so uh, my usual uh, profile. Ah, uh, yeah, cool. I want to do a uh, broom someday, but uh, I don't know. I never go there. <laughs> <laughs> it's on my list <laughs> yeah i did it for a while it was it's nice and I, I think colin's played through bruma uh, i haven't uh i haven't played through the whole thing um, yeah i haven't played it since it first came out um i i did a run through of it uh back then but uh you know they're looks like they're pretty close to uh launching you know some additional uh uh world space so yeah yeah they keep putting out trailers and stuff. Um, yeah, I did so, take, and care. also it's integrated with uh, Dragonborn, or not Dragonborn? Um, Dawn Guard? Do, no, the uh, Legacy, the museum. Yeah, Dragonborn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah, the, the the version five now has a lot more mods um, integrated into it, including um, Carved Brink, I think, and Project AHO, and several other ones that none of which I all of which I downloaded and looked at but never played <laughs> no and that's another one that I've never really just scratched the surface on is uh is that legacy of the dragonborn yeah it's 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 such a complete I mean it doesn't have to be but it's it's a like a completionist thing you know if you, if you want it to be you can just do everything but it, it also takes a fair amount of um, work to get it to play nice with everything. If you have an unstable system, it's, it's, you're not going to make it through all the way. Yeah. I use, I use Vortex. So it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I ha still have my legacy of the Dragon Ball playthrough sitting there. I think I've gotten most of it. The only problem is I didn't get it working right from the very start of the game. So yeah. there's some stuff I can't put up like, uh, the sword of white run, uh, the Dragonstone from Bleak Fall Barrows, um, Bleak Fall, Bleak Fall, from that place. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I want to get back to it because the, the, all the quests there was um, all really good, really interesting. And um, the voice actor, um, 
Oh, was it um... the Orion Morales guy? Yeah, he's really good. But uh, some of the uh, choices that the voice actors made for the the other characters, or you know, I, I want to ask them, like you know, why they chose that. But other than that, it's pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, golfer has been using it uh, forever, and uh, he still misses uh, lots of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost impossible, I think. I, I really like the, the just the the built in storyline of it with the archaeology stuff and and the, the explorers guild and things like that. It's a lot, just a lot of fun just by itself, um, and finding all the, the the sites to dig at um, in all the various dungeons. Um, it's been a lot of fun. If uh, if a little frustrating. Yeah, right. <laughs> trying to get the what you we got because I like getting all those little things and doobies and but trying to find Falmar uh, keystones and things like that is getting to be a bit of a pain. Yeah, uh, why well, I was getting a bit of a pain. I haven't played it in a in a month or two. Yeah, um, you kind of need to walk through. It's it. Uh, you know, uh, I've been through too many hours of Skyrim to to go through everything again everywhere. I need some hints. Well, well, you, you can. I I know where I'll probably go to be able to get, it, but it's the you got to follow the quest lines to go there. So, yeah. okay. and you know, it he wasn't on that particular part of the journey to, like you know, going to. Uh, I was going to say Ustengrave there, but it's uh, one a few of the the dwarven ruin draw dwarven ruins uh, like Urkenthan. Mm. They can't go through Urkenthan without going through the. Um, uh, Thieves Guild and stuff like that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking, of, I mean, uh, Ray, I followed your your uh, suggestions from the last time when you said you were playing Fallout Four with just the graphics mods, um, or was that you were referring to Skyrim? That was Remember? Skyrim, yeah. Skyrim, yeah. Well, I, okay, so I, I did that with with Fallout Four because I got sick of the original, and I I I tried I tried Vortex. I really did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> your vortex verse well something i don't know i well, I, I, uh, I thought about you know pming you but i i wanted to because i wanted to do it with my existing save right so i didn't want to you know um and i started doing it with vortex and it just wasn't working for me i don't grok it well so i i just dumped it and and uh did did it with mod organizer um so because that was easy to just put my uh, yeah, there's a comfort, comfort level to that so yeah yeah i mean i knew what i was doing i'm sure you can do it with vortex too i just didn't didn't really i couldn't figure it out <laughs> so uh, but uh but it looks better now so yeah now that, now that i'm ready to dump it it looks better <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh did i see that uh Stu was doing a fallout 4 character now is that what he's doing Yep, I think he was. Uh, he was but, hit Saint Billy. Yeah, right? yeah. Is he, is he replaying Saint Billy or rebooting it? I think he's re he's continuing. Oh, okay, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah I, that that was an interesting series. I was yeah, kind of well, bummed when he kind of dropped it. Yeah, I got the feeling he was just doing it because of all this, all the the virus thing, because he had a lot of time on his hands, because um, he had sort of walked away from everything else they were going to open up a new uh D, &D uh thing weren't they wasn't that wasn't that the direction he was going he he made a big announcement how he was closing the channel and and there wasn't going to be any more you know skyrim content etc and they were going to move on to doing D, D live stuff and then all of a sudden saint billy popped up so i'm not sure what he's doing uh, maybe it's free time yeah i think i think that might be it if somebody wants a really new playthrough in Fallout 4 there, and uh, you don't mind some adult content, some, uh, but there's no, uh, no, there's no nudity or something like that. But in the language, uh, it's adult because the, the, there's depravity and uh, outcast and remnants. Oh. It's all integrated with the main story, so uh, it, uh, in some way, it forces you to do some quests like uh, the Travis quest and the the, the shroud, and uh, but they change many, 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 many things. Like now, you can instead of killing Kellogg, uh, Kellogg 
you can have him to be uh, one of your followers. Ooh. Mm. So there's you can uh, there's a different twist in the, in the institute. Uh, they change many many. You go back with uh, Sarah, who takes over the the Pridwin. Mm -hmm. So you might, and lot lots of uh, connections to the old games. Uh, Fallout Three and Fallout New Vegas. I really really enjoyed it. But in the Outcast and Remnants, prepare yourself because. Uh, like many uh, mod authors, it's uh, a bit of a difficulty for the difficulty. <laughs> you have to, uh, sometimes you have to fight 40, 50 uh, uh, enemies at the same time just to get a uh, paper note or an entry in a terminal. But I liked it very much. Hmm. There's, there's one for Skyrim too, isn't there? Outcasts and Remnants? Uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, but it's quite different yeah okay it's yeah. not in the grade that the uh, that's a new old a new uh, new thing all, all it's not an overhaul as so, so no. to speak. Yeah. that sounds really interesting that have you played with uh, horizon and fallout 4 at all no okay i wonder how well they work together because i'd like to go back to a, a horizon playthrough i think there's i kind of miss the mods i'm I, i'm enjoying the vanilla game to an extent but maybe that's why i'm kind of bouncing off it a little bit because uh, horizon was amazing and so was sim settlements um, I wonder how much all those work together. It seemed to me that uh, Horizon and Sim Settlements worked okay together. Yeah. Because <clears throat> I think I put a, a profile together for that that just never started a character. Yeah. The Outcast and Remnant sounds awesome. Maybe I, that that's something that, that I never, I didn't know it was that much of an overhaul for, for, F, for Fallout 4. So uh, time to time to crank up the modding on Fallout 4 then. Okay, let's try again. Hi, Michael. This is Dave. I'm uh, going to try and redo this um, Dark Bowl Chapter 3 um, in first person. <laughs> and late last thing. Okay. So, Dark Bowl Chapter 3. Extract from the Journal of Tunnel Dark Bowl. Every day is a school day. Refreshed from his night's sleep, and after being served with a couple of ham cutlets and a warm and kirin tea for breakfast by Kirava, the Argonian landlady, I felt well, well fed and watered as I headed out to speak to some old friends and clients in the Rifton Market, known locally as the Grand Plaza. I had an interesting conversation with Madesi, the Argonian jeweller, or Saxlil as he preferred to be known, a skilled craftsmen who often asked me to find materials, often rare and usually very expensive. This time he needed some gold ore, quicksilver ore, a mammoth tusk, three flawless diamonds and two flawless amethysts for a necklace and ring commissioned to make for Maven Blackbriar. Are either Sibby or Ingen Blackbriar finally going to put down roots and get married, I asked? smiling at the thought of Maven's son settling down. Neither, as far as I know, it is, it is rumoured they are to be gifts for Jarl Elisif the Fair of Hafingar. It's well known that Maven wants to move on and up in the world, and solitude seems, seemingly beckons. By the sound of it, she's not really happy with Jarl Leila Lawgiver's sympathies with Winterhold's storm cloak faction, and is looking to broaden her horizons. Look at what she did in White Run with that meadery she took over. She seemingly has a rich income coming in from White Run with Jarl Balgruf the Greater sitting on the fence as he does. I was intrigued and replied, Interesting. Uh, thanks for the update. As far as your goods are concerned, I'll see what I can do but it may be a few weeks before I'm back in Rifton. I may arrange for payment on delivery by Imperial parcels. Fine by me. Maven knows my work is exquisite and that I only use the best materials, so she's happy to wait unusually, was the reply as I moved on towards the forge. Speaking to Balamund the smith, I told him, I've got you the ten fire salts you wanted and Shanalia will be along shortly to deliver them and settle up. 
great. I was getting worried that I wouldn't get them in time, he, eyes, he replied. They would have been delivered payment on delivery by Imperial Parcels if I hadn't been coming here myself. You did get my message about them. Oh yes, that local courier came by a few days ago, but you know what they're like. They just turn up when they feel like it, out of the blue. Anyway, thanks for getting the salts. I'll expect Janalia later and have your gold ready for you. And so on round the merchants and shops, catching up with the gossip, making some small purchases, mostly delicacies I was fond of, like fresh, chilled skeever heart, wolf liver and that rarity swamp rat tongue. Difficult to get fresh, but the Dunmer food purveyor had managed it somehow. Now, I knew it had something to do with ice wraith teeth, but beyond that I never actually asked too much. I would find out the secret eventually and then cash in on it. I knew a very few I knew very few I knew a very few well off clients throughout Tamriel, especially in Valenwood, who would love a good swamp rack tongue and skiver heart supply, at a cost, of course. Then there was all the rare fish rows and fillets so popular with the Altmer in Somerset, they don't travel well in summer. Percy Honeyhand got his new Dwemer urn, the original having been damaged some years ago. He had tried to repair it, but had realised it wasn't the same, so he had asked me to find a replacement. He seemed happy with the urn, but the price I asked for it made him blanch. He should have negotiated a price before commissioning me to get one. Not the best businessman in the world is Percy. Now, with mundane and more or less legal business over, I headed down to the Ragged Flagon for a drink and a chat with his friends and friends in the Thieves' Guild. I wanted to speak to Tonelia the Fence after she sent me quite an intriguing message. Tonelia couldn't handle most of the goods brought here, but occasionally a rare or expensive item came in, and these were the ones I was really interested in. Brynjolf greeted me warmly and said, Sorry about the guard on the gate. New blood with a lot to learn. I'll catch up with you when you've finished your business. I smiled and nodded a yes. Old Delvin, old Delvin grunted a greeting as I passed, staring gloomily at his tankard as usual. I signalled to Veco to give him another mug of ale and carried on. A man of few words was old Delvin, so I did the same and said nothing. Vex must have been out on a job because there was no signs of her anywhere. I wondered, laughing quietly to myself, who was the unlucky target this time. Vex was really very good at what she did. Tonelia had two items for me. The first was a rare dragon priest mask of Azidel, supposedly from the island of Solstein, acquired <coughs> from a financier in Morrowind. The second was an ebony sword of devouring, a rare and dangerous item which had once belonged to the Thane of Markarth, and seemingly lost during one of the regular Forsworn raids. We haggled and dickered, but as usual we came to an amicable price, and I moved on into the guild proper in the cistern at the rear to speak to Brynjolf, and on the most pressing matters, namely Al Scaven. He's a vampire. God's preserve us. Do you think he's been behind these recent attacks we've had in Rifton and the surrounding farms? Brynlow, Brynjolf looked worried. Bryn, I really don't know, but be warned, the bastard is dangerous. We may have flushed him out of that mine, but he could be anywhere now, I said, feeling dejected. OK, thanks for the warning. I'll pass the word round with his description. Janalia joined us at that moment and nodded to Brynjolf and said to me, Everybody is up to date with payments and deliveries, so we are done here. I nodded and said my goodbyes to Brynjolf, adding, Brynn, don't take any chance with that bloody vampire. Get Carlyle to help if you can. You know how good she is. And she always seems to have some Daedric prince looking out for her. We headed back to the Bean Barb for a quick bite to eat, collected our gear before heading out on the north road to our shore stone, our next place to visit, all being well. 
And that's that story. Uh, thanks very much for listening. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll get back to you with the next chapter soon.